That darn dress, you know the one I'm talking about. It's been inescapable today, dividing the world between those who see white and gold and those who see blue and black. Fashion has always been a powerful form of self-expression, but throughout history, some trends have pushed the boundaries of practicality and safety. From Renaissance cod pieces to arsenic-laced dresses, let's explore 20 of the most ridiculous and dangerous fashion trends that, fortunately, no longer exist today. Number one, cod pieces, a renaissance, fashion faux pas. During the 15th and 16th centuries, cod pieces became a prominent fashion accessory for men. These padded bags were worn over the crotch area of men's leggings and served both practical and symbolic purposes. Initially designed to contain and conceal the intimate area, Cod pieces eventually evolved into an exaggerated display of masculinity. Men began to stuff their cod pieces with various objects to enhance the appearance of their manhood. Some even went as far as placing apples or carrots inside to create a more impressive bulge. This practice led to cod pieces becoming increasingly larger and more ornate, often adorned with embroidery, jewels, and other decorative elements. While cod pieces were considered fashionable at the time, they also served a functional purpose. In an era before pockets were common, men used their cod pieces to store small items such as coins, keys, and even snacks. However, this practice also led to some rather unsanitary situations, as the warm, moist environment created by the cod piece was an ideal breeding ground for bacteria. Number two the deadly allure of arsenic dresses. In the 19th century, green dresses were all the rage among fashionable women. The vibrant green color was achieved using a dye called Sheila's Green, which was made by mixing copper and arsenic. Little did these women know their beloved green gowns were slowly poisoning them with everywhere. Arsenic, a highly toxic substance, was used in the production of various green pigments during this time. When women wore dresses dyed with these pigments, the arsenic would gradually rub off onto their skin, causing a range of health issues. Symptoms included skin irritation, rashes, and even ulcerations. In some cases, the arsenic would be absorbed into the body, leading to more severe problems such as lung and kidney damage. The dangers of arsenic dresses were not limited to the wearer alone. Dressmakers and factory workers involved in the production of these garments were also exposed to the toxic substance, often suffering from chronic health problems as a result. The arsenic-laced fabric would release toxic dust into the air, which workers would inhale on a daily basis. Number 3. Mad Hatters and Mercurial Madness The phrase, mad as a hatter, has its roots in a very real and disturbing fashion trend from the 17th and 18th centuries. During this time, extravagant hats were all the rage among both men and women, and hat making was a booming industry. However, the process of creating these elaborate hats came with a terrible price, mercury poisoning. To create the felt used in many of these hats, hatters would use a process called carroting, which involved treating animal furs with a solution containing mercuric nitrate. The furs were then dried and shaved off to create the fine felt material. Throughout this process, hatters were constantly exposed to mercury vapors, which would accumulate in their bodies over time. The prolonged exposure to mercury led to a condition known as mad hatter's disease, characterized by a range of neurological symptoms. Hatters would often experience tremors, known as hatter's shakes, as well as pathological shyness, irritability, and depression. In extreme cases, mercury poisoning could lead to hallucinations, psychosis, and even death. Number 4. The Painful Practice of Foot Binding For nearly a thousand years, the practice of foot binding was a common and deeply entrenched tradition in China. The origins of this practice are somewhat disputed, but it is believed to have begun during the Song Dynasty, 960-1279 AD, among upper-class court dancers. By the 12th century, 
Foot binding had become widespread among all social classes in China. The process of foot binding was a painful and debilitating one. It typically began when a girl was between the ages of four and seven. The toes would be broken and folded under the sole of the foot, and then the foot would be tightly bound with cloth strips. The goal was to create a small pointed foot known as a lotus foot, which was considered a mark of beauty and refinement. The practice of foot binding was rooted in a complex set of social and cultural factors. Small, delicate feet were seen as a sign of femininity and grace, and women with bound feet were considered more attractive and desirable as wives. Foot binding also served as a marker of social status, as it was primarily practiced by women from wealthy and influential families. Number five, poisonous pale. The dangers of lead-based makeup. In the 17th century, a pale, porcelain-like complexion was the epitome of beauty for women in Europe and the American colonies. To achieve this look, many women turned to lead-based makeup, not realizing the dangerous consequences of their cosmetic choices. The most common form of lead-based makeup was a mixture called Venetian ceruse, which consisted of lead carbonate, vinegar, and water. Women would apply this mixture to their faces and necks to create a smooth, white appearance. Other lead-based cosmetics included lead sulfate, which was used as a foundation, and red lead, which was used as a rouge. The use of lead-based makeup was widespread among women of all social classes, from aristocrats to working-class women. The pale, unblemished complexion achieved through these cosmetics was seen as a symbol of refinement, grace, and even moral purity. However, the constant use of lead-based makeup led to a host of health problems for women. Lead is a highly toxic substance that can be absorbed through the skin, and prolonged exposure can lead to a range of symptoms, including headaches, fatigue, constipation, and even paralysis. In some cases, the use of lead-based makeup even led to death. Number six, belladonna, beauty at the cost of sight. During the Victorian era, women went to great lengths to achieve a dreamy, doe-eyed look that was considered the height of beauty. One of the most dangerous ways they did this was by using eye drops made from the belladonna plant, also known as deadly nightshade. Belladonna is a highly toxic plant that contains atropine, a substance that causes the pupils to dilate. So the toxicology report came back on Lance. Nothing. But the medical examiner said his body showed clear signs that he was killed by Belladonna. The porn star? When applied to the eyes, Belladonna drops would create a wide-eyed, starry gaze that was thought to be alluring and seductive. The drops were often marketed as a way to enhance a woman's natural beauty and make her more attractive to potential suitors. However, the use of belladonna drops was far from safe. In addition to causing pupil dilation, atropine can also lead to a host of other symptoms, including blurred vision, dry mouth, and flushed skin. In high doses, it can even cause hallucinations, delirium, and convulsions, Long-term use of belladonna drops could lead to even more serious health problems. Chronic exposure to atropine can cause damage to the optic nerve, leading to permanent vision loss. Some women who used belladonna drops regularly even went blind as a result. Number seven, Poulains. The longer the toe, the higher the status. In the late 14th century, a new shoe style took Europe by storm. The Poulain, also known as the Krakow or Pike Shoe. Characterized by its extremely long pointed toe, the Poulain quickly became a symbol of fashion and status among the nobility. The length of the toe on a Poulain was directly correlated with the wearer's social standing. The longer the toe, the higher the status of the individual. Some Poulains had toes that extended up to 18 inches beyond the foot, making walking a challenging and sometimes comical affair. The Poulain originated in Krakow, Poland, and was introduced to England by Polish nobles in the 1300s. The style quickly caught on among the English aristocracy. 
who saw it as a way to display their wealth and fashionable taste. However, the Poulain was not without its critics. The Catholic Church denounced the shoe as a symbol of decadence and immorality, and some towns even passed laws limiting the length of the toe to prevent people from tripping and falling in the streets. Number 8. The Wig Craze. Extravagance and Infestation. In the 17th and 18th centuries, Europe was gripped by a wig craze that saw men and women alike donning elaborate, towering hair pieces in the name of fashion and status. The trend was started by King Louis XIV of France, who began wearing a wig in 1624 to cover up his premature balding. As the French court was the arbiter of fashion at the time, the trend quickly spread to other European countries, with wigs becoming increasingly elaborate and ornate. By the mid-18th century, it was not uncommon to see men and women sporting wigs that were several feet tall and adorned with ribbons, jewels, and even model ships and bird cages. The maintenance of these wigs was a time-consuming and expensive affair, requiring a team of dedicated hairdressers and servants. Wigs were powdered with starch or flour to keep them looking fresh, and they were often scented with perfumes to mask any unpleasant odors. Number 9. Crinolines. Fashion's Burning Question. In the mid-19th century, the crinoline became a must-have fashion accessory for women seeking to achieve the ideal silhouette of the time, a tiny waist and a voluminous skirt. The crinoline was a large, cage-like structure made of steel or whalebone hoops that was worn under a skirt to give it shape and volume. While crinolines were undeniably fashionable, they also posed a serious safety risk to the women who wore them. The wide, circular shape of the crinoline made it difficult for women to navigate through narrow spaces, and they were prone to getting caught on objects or brushing up against open flames. In fact, the crinoline was responsible for numerous deaths by fire during the Victorian era. The combination of the highly flammable fabric of women's dresses and the open flames used for heating and lighting, homes created a perfect storm for disaster. Women wearing crinolines would accidentally brush up against a candle or fireplace, and their skirts would quickly go up in flames. One of the most famous victims of the crinoline was the Empress Eugenie of France, who narrowly escaped death when her crinoline caught fire at a ball in 1860. The incident led to a temporary decline in the popularity of the crinoline, but it wasn't long before the fashion world embraced the style once again. Number 10. Corsets. Squeezing the life out of style. For centuries, the corset was an essential undergarment for women seeking to achieve the ideal figure, a tiny waist, a flat stomach, and an upright posture. First introduced in the 16th century, the corset became increasingly restrictive and exaggerated over time, reaching its most extreme form in the Victorian era. The Victorian corset was a feat of engineering, designed to mold the female body into an hourglass shape through the use of whalebone, steel, and tight lacing. Women would spend hours being laced into their corsets by servants or family members, enduring immense pressure and discomfort in the pursuit of fashion. The health risks associated with corset wearing were numerous and well documented. The constriction of the rib cage and abdomen led to a host of digestive problems, including acid reflux, constipation, and even internal bleeding. The pressure on the lungs made it difficult for women to breathe, leading to fainting spells and even permanent damage to the respiratory system. Number 11. Hobble skirts astride too far. In the early 1910s, a new fashion trend emerged that would quite literally hobble women's mobility. The hobble skirt. This slim-fitting skirt, which narrowed dramatically at the hem, was designed to create a sleek, column-like silhouette that was in line with the Edwardian ideal of long, lean lines. The hobble skirt was so named because it restricted women's movement to such an extent that they were forced to take small, mincing steps, almost as if they were hobbling along. I remember the hobble skirt. Oh, there was an invention. 
Some versions of the skirt were so narrow that women couldn't take steps longer than a few inches, making it difficult to walk, climb stairs, or even get in and out of carriages. Despite the obvious impracticality of the hobble skirt, it quickly became a fashion sensation, worn by stylish women all over Europe and America. Some women even took to wearing ankle cuffs or straps to keep their skirts from riding up and to maintain the desired narrow silhouette. Number 12, Macaroni Fashion, the original dandies. In the late 18th century, a flamboyant fashion trend emerged among wealthy young men in England and America, the macaroni style, named after the exotic Italian pasta dish, which was considered a delicacy at the time. The macaroni style was characterized by elaborate, exaggerated clothing and an effeminate, foppish demeanor. Macaroni men wore tight-fitting, brightly colored suits with high collars and ruffled shirts, they often sported towering wigs, which were powdered and scented with perfume, and carried ornate walking sticks and snuff boxes. Their shoes were equally elaborate, with high heels and large buckles. The macaroni style was a way for young men to flaunt their wealth and fashionable taste, and to differentiate themselves from the more conservative, traditional styles of dress worn by their elders. However, the style was also met with a great deal of criticism and ridicule, with many people seeing it as a symbol of moral decay and effeminacy. Number 13, Chopin's Walking Tall, Falling Hard. In Renaissance Italy, a curious fashion trend emerged among wealthy women, the Chopin. These towering platform shoes, which could reach heights of up to 20 inches, were a symbol of status and wealth, and were often worn by aristocratic women at formal occasions and events. Chopins were typically made of wood or cork and were covered in luxurious fabrics like silk or velvet. They were designed to elevate women's feet and make them appear taller and more elegant, in line with Renaissance ideals of beauty and grace. However, walking in Chopin was no easy feat, Women would often require the assistance of servants or escorts to help them balance and move around. Falls were common and could result in serious injuries like broken ankles or even concussions. Number 14, the rise and fall of bloomer dress. In the mid 19th century, a new fashion trend emerged that promised to liberate women from the restrictive clothing of the past, the bloomer dress. Named after its creator, American activist Amelia Bloomer, the Bloomer dress consisted of a loose-fitting tunic worn over a pair of baggy trousers that were gathered at the ankles. Bloomer argued that traditional women's clothing with its tight corsets and heavy skirts was harmful to both physical and mental health. She believed that a more practical and comfortable style of dress would allow women to move more freely and participate more fully in society. The bloomer dress quickly gained popularity among reform-minded women in the United States and Europe. It was seen as a symbol of women's emancipation and a rejection of traditional gender roles. Women who wore bloomers were often associated with the growing women's rights movement and were seen as bold and unconventional. Number 15, dental jewelry. A Mayan smile, makeover. The ancient Mayans are renowned for their impressive achievements in art, architecture, and astronomy, but they are also known for a unique and somewhat startling fashion trend. Dental jewelry. The Mayans believed that modifying their teeth was a way to enhance their beauty and demonstrate their social status. Mayan dental jewelry typically involved drilling holes into the teeth and inserting precious stones, such as jade, turquoise, or obsidian. The most common types of dental modifications were inlays, where a small hole was drilled into the tooth and a stone was placed inside, and filing, where the teeth were shaped into points or other desired shapes. The process of modifying teeth was a painful and time-consuming one, often taking several days to complete. It was typically performed by skilled artisans using rudimentary tools like obsidian blades and bone drills. 
The fact that many Mayan skulls have been found with these modifications intact is a testament to the skill and precision of these ancient dentists. Number 16. Neck Rings – A Stretch Too Far in some traditional cultures, particularly in parts of Africa and Asia, neck rings have been worn as a symbol of beauty and social status for centuries. The most famous example of this practice is the Kayan people of Myanmar, where women traditionally wear a series of brass coils around their necks, starting from a young age and gradually increasing the number and length of the coils over time. The purpose of the neck rings is to give the appearance of an elongated neck, which is considered a sign of beauty and grace in Kayan culture. The weight of the rings actually pushes down on the shoulders and compresses the rib cage, creating the illusion of a longer neck. Number 17. Lead-lined bonnets. A headache of a trend. In the 19th century, a curious fashion trend emerged among women in Europe and America, the lead-lined bonnet. These bonnets, which were typically made of silk or velvet and lined with lead strips, were designed to keep their shape and protect the wearer's face from the sun. The use of lead in clothing was not uncommon in the 19th century, as it was often used to add weight and drape to fabrics. However, the use of lead in bonnets was particularly concerning, as the metal was in close proximity to the wearer's face and could easily be inhaled or ingested. The dangers of lead exposure were not well understood in the 19th century, and many women who wore lead-lined bonnets experienced a range of health problems as a result. These included headaches, fatigue, nausea, and even neurological damage in severe cases, Number 18. The Perils of Powdered Wigs In the 17th and 18th centuries, powdered wigs were all the rage among the European elite. These elaborate hair pieces, which were often made from human or horse hair and coated in powder made from starch or flour, were seen as a symbol of wealth, status, and fashionable taste. However, the powdered wigs of the Georgian era were not without their drawbacks. For one thing, they were incredibly expensive to maintain, requiring regular restyling and powdering to keep them looking fresh. They were also quite heavy and uncomfortable to wear, especially in hot weather. But perhaps the most concerning aspect of powdered wigs was the potential health risks they posed to their wearers. The powder used to coat the wigs was often made from lead, which could cause a range of health problems if inhaled or ingested over time. These included headaches, fatigue, cognitive impairment, and even seizures or paralysis in extreme cases. In addition to the risks of lead exposure, powdered wigs were also a breeding ground for lice and other parasites. The dense, often unwashed hair provided a warm, moist environment for these creatures to thrive and infestations were a common problem among wig wearers. Number 19. Bustles, the backside of fashion. In the late 19th century, the bustle became a popular fashion accessory among women in Europe and America. This padded undergarment, which was worn beneath a skirt to add volume and shape to the rear, was seen as a way to enhance the female silhouette and create a more dramatic, attention-grabbing look. Bustles came in a variety of shapes and sizes, from small, subtle pads to large, exaggerated structures that could extend several inches from the body. They were typically made from materials like horsehair, wire, or even inflatable rubber, and were often adorned with ribbons, lace, or other decorative elements. While bustles were undoubtedly fashionable, they were also quite impractical and uncomfortable to wear. The added bulk and weight of the bustle made it difficult to sit or move around easily, and the rigid structure of some bustles could cause pain and discomfort after extended wear. Number 20. The crinoline chair. Sitting pretty, standing awkwardly. In the mid-19th century, the crinoline became a must-have fashion accessory for women seeking to achieve the ideal silhouette of the time. A tiny waist and a voluminous skirt. However, the wide, circular shape of the crinoline posed some practical challenges when it came to sitting down. 
leading to the invention of a curious piece of furniture known as the crinoline chair. The crinoline chair was designed with a wide, shallow seat and a low backrest, allowing women wearing crinolines to sit down without crushing or flattening their skirts. The chair often had no armrests, as these would have interfered with the shape of the crinoline, and some designs even featured a small platform or step to help women mount and dismount the chair gracefully. While the crinoline chair was undoubtedly a clever solution to a practical problem, it also had some drawbacks of its own. The wide, shallow seat could be quite uncomfortable to sit on for extended periods, and the low backrest provided little support for the spine. Additionally, the lack of armrests made it difficult for women to balance or steady themselves while sitting, leading to occasional spills or tumbles.